changes. All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Rockstar Flipper YouTube channel. And I wanna go over 10 ways, I wrote all of these down in my book. I do still use a book and pen every now and again. Um, of the 10 kind of business models to reselling, this is all 10 different ways that people do it. You know, like one way would be like the normal thrifting garage sale. One way might be somebody that purchases bulk and pallets. So those are two different business models, right? The third business model might be somebody who buys storage units. And a fourth business model might be somebody who only does retail arbitrage or online arbitrage and somebody else who only does private labeling. They buy all their stuff from China or India and have it shipped in and private label it, FBA it, whatever uh, it might be. So there's 10 kind of different business models. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to give them a rating in five different categories um, on a rating one to 10. These wanna have the lowest score. And I'm gonna explain to you what I mean. So I'm gonna rate them in category one of the price it takes to get started, how much money you need to get started in that business model, that side of things. And if, it, if it's a one, a one to 10, if it's a one, well, that means it doesn't take very much money. You can get started for 20 bucks, you know? If it's a 10, well, that means it's gonna take you thousands and thousands, five, 10, $15,000 to get started. And so we wanted to have a lower score because the less money you have to put out, the better. And then number two, same thing, I'm gonna rate it with the time one to 10. If it's a one or it's a two, it means you can do it in a little bit of time. You don't have to spend much time working at it and you can make money. If it takes an eight or a nine or a 10, then that means it takes hours and hours of dedication every day. Um, the third category is gonna be scalability. What do I mean by scalability? The ability to grow it into something significant. And so if it's a one or a two or a three, it means that there's a really good chance that you can scale that up from doing a couple thousand a month to doing 10, 15, 20, 30,000 a month. If it's a nine or 10, it means it's kind of limited on how much money you can make. Now, every business can make as much as it wants to make, but that means it's gonna require a team and employees and all that sort of thing. So scalability, we've got price to start, time, um, scalability. Uh, number four is gonna be the risk. How much risk? Is it is it a safe business, pretty safe bet? You know, buying stuff from garage sales for a dollar or two, really a limited risk, a one or a two, because if you happen to buy something bad or you lose money on something or get a return or a scammer, you're gonna lose a couple bucks. You're not gonna lose your mortgage payment. You're not gonna lose a lot. You know, and if you buy something, to pay too much for it, generally you're gonna be into it for a couple dollars. Really low risk, you know, you don't need a building, you don't have a lease to sign, so nothing really bad. If it's a nine or 10, and we're talking about, you know, having a pallet business where you're spending thousands of dollars on pallets and maybe an employee, there's some risk involved with that. So it's gonna be much higher. Same with like buying thousands of dollars in private label uh, merchandise you've got much more risk and so we've got price time scalability um, the risk factor involved and finally is the money potential that's what everybody cares about if it's a one or two it means you could probably make a thousand or two thousand dollars a month as a one-person operation if it's a nine or ten it means the item is going to be potentially scalable into as much money as you want there are some business models that generally have a better top in potential than other ones um, and it doesn't mean any of these models are good or bad or uh, you know are worse than the others it just means here's what you should honestly expect if you go this route so what I'm gonna do is I'll put them up in one of these corners with the name of the um, the route the business model that we're going on and then it's gonna have five categories the price the time the scalability the risk and the money potential and uh, and then I'll give it a score of 1 to 10 and the lower score is better and so we want to see which one has the lowest score and one of these business models is gonna be one that I hate and one that's probably not gonna matter but um, and then we'll I'll, I'll put at the very end of this video a little chart of those 10 business models and how they fell in range so we'll have that up there for you you'll be able to see it on the screen um, with that said in, in the VIP group and inside of uh, the mentorship and the training program that I've done, I'll, I'll link it below again. Um, inside of that, we talk about all these different business models because I have people that deal in all of these different models. I have storage unit buyers, I have thrifters, I have pallet buyers, I have everything. And so you'll be able to you know network and talk with all of them, including myself, because with the exception of about two of these business models, I've done every single thing on here. I've thrifted, I went to garage sales, I bought pallets, I bought estate sales, I bought storage units, um, I've done consignment work, I've done private label, you know, if you can call it, I've done it, uh, with the exception of, like I said, one, maybe two of these. Um, but let's just jump right into it. And again, if you're interested in that, if you wanna be in that private group, not only the private group, but I put the whole package together, all the training videos, all the guides, everything that I've put out, including 
one-on-one -on -one calls with me, Skype, FaceTime, whatever you use, Google Hangouts, um, you know, cups with strings on it, however you want to talk to me, is included. It's linked below. You're not going to beat the price. It's not going to stay there available forever because my time is limited. I literally have been on calls all week. I'll be on calls all next week until we leave for Vegas and then all calls August. So if you want to get in for August, you got to use the link below before everyone else gets signed up. I've already had two people schedule calls for when we get back the first day of August. Um, we're back like the 29th or 28th or something, but um, don't miss out because eventually once the calendar's full, I can't put anybody else on the calendar because I only have so many hours in a day. So use that link. Let's jump in. You'll start seeing these screenshots come up and we're going to start with thrifting and garage selling. So these are the people that go out every day. It's most of you who are watching this and they buy items one at a time, two at a time, come out of a store with 10, 15, 20 items. They go to several stores, they come home, they list it and they then individually, you know, post these items. Sometimes they get quantities and they sell them. And so as a one man show, that's just how they do it. Sometimes it's a husband and wife, couple, brother, sister, doesn't matter. So let's start with the price to start. So thrifting and reselling requires a very little bit of money. You can go out to a thrift store with 20, 30 bucks and get some good stuff and start your selling career. Really, you don't need any more than that. If you want to do any kind of significant sales, you'll probably put out a couple hundred dollars. But for the most part, you can get started with a cheapo light kit. You can get started with, you don't even need a light kit, a mannequin, backdrop, flat lay. You don't need much in the way of supplies. Honestly, that business, 100, 150 bucks, you could go all in and really do it pretty well, um, but you could start it for even less than that. So I'm gonna give thrifting and reselling, uh, thrifting and garage selling and, and individual purchases like that, a two, one out of 10, 10 being expensive, one being really cheap, it's a two. Yeah, you're gonna, it's not free, but you'll have to spend a couple bucks, but not much. So we're giving that a two. And if anybody disagrees with any of these numbers that I'm saying, please comment down below and tell me what you think it should have got and, uh, and we can reevaluate it. Okay, so next is time. The time it takes to go garage selling, yard selling, etc. Well, it's a lot. You're gonna have to source all day, a couple hours at least, and then you're gonna have to list for a couple hours. You have to ship, you have to edit, you have to prep. It's a lot of time. I'm not saying it's the most time consuming of items, but it's absolutely right there at the top. And I've gotta give it a nine. I have to give it a nine because there's not much that takes more time than thrifting and garage selling and yard selling. You're trading off that price of cost of goods versus the sweat equity and work that you have to do. Okay, so the scalability. So sourcing and thrifting and garage selling, for the most part, is limited to as much work as one person can get done. But it is scalable if you are able to source and list 100 items a week, 400 items a month, you're not even listing all 30 days, and that gives you the ability to get up 400 new items and you sell 300 items, you could continue to build that thing. Eventually you'll hit a wall and usually for most people, it's you know even the serious ones at 2,000 or 2,500 listings, if you got to that point, that's as much as one person can handle individual listings. The scalability is okay, it's there, but it's not amazing. You're not endlessly unlimited to how much you can list. So I put it right in the middle and I gave it a five. So thrifting garage selling, I gave it a five for scalability. So next we're gonna go with the risk factor of garage selling. And while it's not unrisky, there is very limited. Again, uh, talked about at the beginning, couple dollars on an item, go out, spend 20, $30. Worst case, you'll sell it, should get your money back, should break even, <laughs> very worst case. You should always be profiting. Maybe you find a stained item, maybe somebody scams you out of a $20 dress. You should still be even or profitable. So we're gonna give the risk factor on thrifting garage selling like a two. I think it's not a one, but I think it's a two. I think there's very, very limited risk on garage sale individual picking. We call it picking, I guess, right? Is that the right word? Okay, anyways, last one is the potential for money. So. This one works in the opposite direction. So if it's a one, that means that's amazing. Top of the line, you could make endless amounts of money. If it's a 10, it means you're probably limited to making a couple hundred to a thousand dollars a month. So while thrifting and garage selling is not a nine or 10, it's not endless. Again, it's limited to the amount of money, um, amount of work that you can get done to the amount of money you can make. Thrifting and garage selling can be very profitable. You can make three, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars a month as a one person show. And so again, I'm gonna put it right in the middle of money potential, and I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna give it, uh, compared to everything else, I'm gonna give it a four. It should probably be a five, but we'll go with a four here because it's kind of on the lower end because a lot of people get stuck with that. So um, there you go. We've got a price of two, we've got a time of nine, a scalability of five, we've got a risk factor of two, and we've got a money potential of four. And if my math is correct, that's 16, 22 is a total score, 22 out of, 
out of 22 out of, what are we doing, 50. So 22 out of 50 is pretty good. It's really, really only the time consumability that is bad on it. Okay, number two, we're gonna go with pallets and bulk purchasing. So we've stepped up from garage sales and individual items to buying bulk purchases. CNC Wholesale, Suncoast Liquidators, uh, bstock.com, bulk.com, whoever you choose. And uh, so I wanna run these numbers, which we'll see again. And we're gonna just run through this quickly so I don't make this video too, too long. Um, the price to start on pallets is expensive. It's not the most expensive, but it's expensive. And I gave it an eight because it's gonna cost you a couple thousand dollars to get rolling. And that's a lot of money to a lot of people. So we're gonna rank that as an eight. We're gonna rank the time, because you still have to unpack this, sort it, list it, test it. It's a lot of time. It's gonna be right up there with garage selling and thrifting, probably close. I gave it an eight as well. It could be a nine. I'm gonna go with eight, not good on the time. The scalability of bulk is a little bit better than thrifting and garage selling. Now you still have to spend a lot of time, but you are cutting out that sourcing time. So you're upping your scalability at least a little bit and I gave it a four. Lower number, better scalability, so I gave it a four. Next was the risk factor. Well, while pallets are risky, trust me, you can buy junk, um, they're not the riskiest. If you look at the manifest and you do it right, you should at least be able to get your money back out of it. And if I get willing to get my money back out of it and not lose money, then at least I know I'm like in the halfway point. It sucks, but at least I know I'm not like terrible. So I gave it right in the middle at a five. And then the final one is the money. Um, you know, with thrifting and garage selling, with the money capabilities being like a four or five, somewhere in the middle, pallets are probably a little bit better in the profitability side. So I'm gonna give them a four on the profitability, possible potential profitability um, of that. And so when we add that up, we got a 16, a 24, 29 out of 50. So it's a little bit more risky and a little bit more time consuming and price consuming than a garage sale thrifting business. Not enough in the increase in money to really go that route unless you really can do it. So 29 out of 50 for pallets, business number two. Okay, number three is estate sales and it's gonna be pretty similar to uh, garage sales. So I gave the price start. Now on estate sales, the price is gonna be a little bit higher because some of the goods are higher. I gave it a four, um, higher than uh, thrifting and garage sales, but less than pallets and bulk purchasing, obviously. So we gave that a four. The time is still gonna take you as much time, if not as much uh, as garage selling or pallets, maybe a little less than garage selling, because you can go to estate sales, they usually have tons of stuff, um, and they're on their website. So that's an eight. The scalability of uh, estate sales, similar to garage sales, while you can get a lot of stuff and make some good money, you can't go endlessly, put it right in the middle at five. The risk factor of estate sales, a little bit higher than garage sales and uh, thrift stores. I gave it a three because you're paying usually a little bit more money and some of the stuff may not be you know, tested or who knows where it came from. A little bit higher, not much. And finally, the money potential, again, right in the middle. You can get some good scores on estate sales and make some good money, but you're limited to how many you can get to, how many you visit, how the prices are, so you're kind of falling right in that middle. If we add up the estate sales, that's 12, 17, 22, we're at 25, it falls somewhere in between that um, garage sale and that pallet business model. So it's number three. Number four is gonna be a fun one for you guys. And uh, this is gonna be storage units. Storage units, you guys have seen them all over YouTube. I'm sure you've seen them on TV. You've seen them everywhere. So the price, so it's definitely more expensive than estate sales, definitely more expensive than thrift and garage, typically a little less than pallets. So we put pallets at eight, we put estate sales at four. I went ahead and put uh, storage units at six. You're talking 200, 300, 400, $500 for garage sales, cheaper than the pallets. Uh, typically, sometimes you can get estate sales for 50 bucks, or storage units for 50 bucks. Just depends, gave it a six. The time, it is very time consuming. It's way up there, it's another eight because you still gotta go through items just like you would on a pallet. You gotta sort what's in that garage or storage unit, what you're gonna throw away. You guys know what I mean. So eight, uh, the scalability of storage units gonna probably fall right at that pallet four. You can uh, kind of scale it a little higher than garage sale, estate sales, but not much. Uh, the risk, the risk, I'm giving it a seven. Why? Because you have no idea what's inside. You're spending a solid chunk of change. Huge risk factor, seven on the storage unit. And finally, the money availability, money potential. I gave it a six, it's a little bit better than the other ones, or I'm sorry, I gave it a four, opposite direction. A Little bit better than the fives where everything else falls, because you can make a little bit more money. You can score on storage units. It's kind of like a pallet almost, like you never know what you're gonna get completely, but pallets, you have a manifest, less risk. 
storage units more risk because you have no idea what's coming. So storage units, we got a six and an eight is 14. Two fours is 18, 22. We got another 29 um, out of the storage units. And that doesn't surprise me because it comes out same near pallets. They're almost uh, identical in what they are. Next, we have retail arbitrage. Retail arbitrage is the act of going into like a retail target or a Walmart clearance aisles, finding really cheap items and then listing them on, you know, buying them, take them home, sending them then to FBA or listing them on eBay, however you want to do it. Buying from a retail, selling it online, retail arbitrage. So the price, it's going to cost you a little bit more. It's going to cost you like storage unit and a state sale and pallet, or not a state sale pallet and bulk purchases because you got to buy items in quantity. You're going to go in and buy a five or ten dollar clearance item that you're going to sell for twenty five, thirty five, forty five dollars, but you got to spend. You know, you're going to buy ten of them for eight bucks and spend eighty dollars. So you're spending way more than garage sales, estate sales. And I gave RA a six for pricing. Time, a lot of time going to these stores. Eight. Absolutely, an eight. you guys should see a trend on these times that they're nines and eights. It's nothing is easy. There's very few things in life that don't take time. So that's an eight. The scalability of this is going to be a four. It's slightly scalable, but not great. And that's because you still have to take all of the time to travel around to these stores. Um, the risk factor on this is a five. It's right in the middle. Most of this stuff you're going to be looking up and scanning and it's going to be profitable. Even if the price drops a little bit, you should at least get your money back. There are times that the, the prices dive and the race to the bottom happens. So you have to be careful of that. But the risk factor is mostly controlled. There's not really a ton of loss and hits on that. So we gave it a five in the middle. And finally, the money potential I went ahead and gave on RA a four as well. Better than some of the other things, but still the act of going around, traveling, you're only a one man show. The good part is you can buy in quantity which could help you get the price points up or the, the total number of sales. So when we add RA up, we're at 14, 18, 22, 27 for RA, a little bit better than the storage unit numbers that we got there in the bulk pallet purchasing. Okay, online arbitrage, a little bit different. That's the act of buying from one online site and selling to the other. Now, online arbitrage used to be good um, because you could just do it straight online. We'll talk about that in another business model. Now you have to buy the items and bring them in and then sell them. So your price is gonna be higher. You're gonna have a seven. One out of 10, it's gonna be a seven because you need money to start. The time, while you don't have to go around to you know stores and everything, you still have to go through websites. So we're still gonna give it a seven because it just takes a lot of time to search websites and browse and do things. There are softwares that will help you. Um, Next is the scalability. I gave it a low number, a three, because you can scale online arbitrage as much as you want. As fast as you can go online and buy stuff, you could scale it. Now, it is limited to how much you can search out and how much is available, etc. but there's endless things. You know, Jamie Pace buys ties online from people on eBay who price them for 15. He throws them up on Posh and Macari and gets 50. That's online arbitrage. The tie comes in, he comes in, he lists it. He's still got to do some work, so it's not a one or a two or a zero. It's a three, and I think that's fair. Um, the risk factor on online arbitrage, five, uh, because typically you know exactly what you're buying, what it's worth. Even if it takes time to get to you and then list it and sell it, it could drop, but you should be okay on that. And finally, the scalability of online arbitrage. Scalability is really good, it's a four. The reason that I'm giving it a four is because you can buy a lot of stuff online arbitragely and you don't need a huge team. Um, but there is still some work to do, so this, the, uh, you know, the money potential, um, I'm sorry, the last one is money potential. You can buy a lot of stuff to make a lot of money, and I've given it a four because that money is endless if you could buy quantities and quantities and quantities of stuff, you just have to find it. So we've got a seven for price, a seven for time, we've got a five for the scalability, we've got a five for the risk, and a four for the money. I think the money outweighs the scalability and the risk a little bit. So I gave that a four and the other two a five. That's a 14, 19, 23, that's a 28. And so as you can see, it's a little bit above retail arbitrage, they're pretty similar. Um, now, drop shipping, everyone's favorite. It's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number seven business model, drop shipping. Um, I hate it, don't do it, they're banning it. Uh, eventually, it's gonna not exist. It'll always exist to some point, but it's not gonna exist the way it does now. Um, the price to start is a one. I mean, you don't need any money to drop ship, almost no money. You can start for next to nothing, so a one. The time it takes, it's still gonna take you a little bit of research, a little bit of doing. It's still gonna be a six because you have to spend some time to do it. Uh, the scalability of it is a two. You could scale it as much as you want to drop ship, in theory. If you have a supplier and a wholesaler, you could sell all their merchandise, drop ship it, and just go to town. The risk factor is a 10. Why? 
Uh, dropshipping puts your account at risk of being suspended. I've gone over why dropshipping is terrible, why eBay is banning some of it, most of it, uh, why Amazon is too, it's a 10. You don't want that at all. And then the potential money that can be made on it is a two as well because it's endless. You could endlessly make money on um, dropshipping. So that gives us a 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, a 21. Now that seems good, right, 21? The problem is it's all in the risk. You can't risk your accounts. Unless you get a legitimate supplier and wholesaler, dropshipping is not for you, trust me. Uh, consignment is really good. Um, no price to start, it's a, it's a zero, you have no cost. Um, the time is still high, like garage sales, you gotta list stuff, you gotta sort stuff, clean stuff, that's an eight. Um, and then scalability and money-making ability, both fives, because you can make some money, but not a great a lot of money. And consignment risk is only a one, because you're not paying for any of the inventory, you have almost no risk in consignment, right? So that's really good. So we've got um, nine, 19 for consignment. Consignment is an awesome business, but it's hard, and you're not gonna make uh, you know as much money as you would having the inventory yourself. Although it's a great business model you guys should look into. So that was number eight, right? Uh, number nine is private label, and this is the one people ask me about all the time. What is private label? Uh, buying an item, putting your own name on it, and selling it as Casey's 10 Cups or whatever. Um, now, the money to start private labeling is nine. Why? You have to be able to buy the inventory. You, most cases, you have to be able to package it, label it, brand it. You also have to be able to advertise it. You have to be able to market it and get it in front of people. You have to be able to wait to get paid because it's gonna take months and months to get the product, to get it delivered, to get it branded, to get it listed, to get it sold, to get paid. It's just a huge outlay of cash, a nine, easy nine. Um, the time that it takes, now the time is not bad because all you have to do is make the order and then just wait. And then once it comes in, you're gonna list in quantities and then just wait for it to sell. So I put that time at three. It's a great, great time uh, efficient business. The scalability and the money making potential are both ones. You can buy th 10,000 Casey's 10 cups uh, in blue, red, green, yellow, post them up and if they sell and you make money, you could sell 10,000 of them in a day or you could sell 10 in a day. The scalability is huge. The money making potential is huge. The risk, however, is pretty high on private label. I gave it a nine as well, why? Your product may not end up selling. You may end up wasting a bunch of money on product that you can never sell. You may end up wasting money on product and then wasting money on advertising and then nobody still wants it. It's a nine, it's a very high risk business. So that's 18, 19, 20, 23 on the private label. It sounds like a great business, it's a very high risk business. It takes a lot of money too, five, 10, 15, 20,000 dollars. And the fine, Final one is one that used to be my favorite. I wish it was still open. It's called live auctions. Hey, 10, 10, 10, 10 here. I got 10 now, 15, 15 now, 20, 20, 25. You know what I'm talking about. Now, the prices are gonna be about um, a six. They're gonna be kind of high. I mean, you're gonna pay more for individual items than you would at thrift stores and garage sales, but it's not you know insane. The time is a seven. It's, it's a lot of time. You gotta go sit through these auctions. Then you gotta list, you gotta sort, you gotta a seven for sure. Um, scalability. Six, it's not great. You can buy a lot of stuff at auctions and if you buy out their inventory at the end of what didn't sell, you can scale a little bit. Same with the money making ability. I pay that a six, you can make good money but you're not gonna make like hundreds of thousands of dollars. 5,000, six, 7,000 a month isn't unheard of. And finally, the risk factor involved. I gave that a six as well because there is risk in buying things at auctions and overpaying, um, you know, spending all of your time there and not making a ton of money. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, 24, 31 on the live auction. So out of 50, um, I'll put the graph up here. You guys can see kind of where these land and what kind of business model you want based on whether it takes a lot of time, whether it takes a lot of money. You know, if you don't have a lot of money, you want to look for those garage sales and consignments and, and cheaper stuff. You know, until you have money, online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, pallets, bulk purchases, and private label are kind of out of your reach. If you don't have a lot of time, but you have money, those might be the routes that you want to go. And so all of these different things are there for you to try your hand at. Again, I'll link them here. Um, you know, under no circumstances do I say not to do any of them, uh, except drop shipping. Really, really discourage you from doing drop shipping because too many people get flagged, get suspended, and it's just not a good idea. Even with legitimate sources, it's happening. So just keep that in mind. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it gave you some ideas for some other business models. There's church sales and, you know, like uh, rummage sales and UK people have boot sales and there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. But that's just the 10 most popular, most common ones that I see. And we discuss all of these except really drop shipping. Um, inside of the private group and inside of tutoring and mentoring. And again, I'll link it below. Please use it. Uh, yes, I do charge for that information. Um, why? Because 
it helps you guys, it helps you make money. I'll be posting a bunch of reviews from uh, happy people that I've helped make more money. Uh, the information is priceless, and at the price that I'm putting it at, $99, right down there for everything. The membership in the a year inside the group alone will pay for that membership because uh, what you learn from those people in there and the networking is priceless, along with being able to have access to me, access to the calls that we're gonna do, and all of the videos and guides that you will get. Not to mention when my new platform comes out, you'll be able to log in with your own account and all that stuff. Um, it's gonna be awesome. It'll be out next month, like I promised, uh, hopefully right after I get back from Vegas. And uh, with that said, sorry for the long video. I appreciate you guys sticking with me and watching. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you share this with everybody and if, if you're in other groups or your own groups, please let them see this. It's important and I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. And uh, hopefully some of you, uh, most of you, a lot of you will, uh, will hit me up and take me up in the offer for the calls in the program. It's down there. Um, it'll be the first link. Get it. Everything will be automatically emailed to you. You can pay with PayPal or your credit card or whatever. And um, I'll make it worth your while, especially on the call, I promise. So if anybody in the comment section has already got a call with me, please comment and let people know what you think, and I'll pin it to the top about how our calls went. Uh, in the meantime, have a wonderful night, and I'll see everyone next time.